on an old manuscript found in a monastery where it has lain for centuries. It is a letter from Claudia, wife of Pontius Pilate, to a friend in Rome. Claudia, wife of Pontius Pilate, by Gail Potter. It is not pleasant here, in this little Gaelic mountain town, where Pontius Pilate and I have been driven. The people about us know the shame which has descended upon us. Even here, in this place of exile, the children on the street slink away from me, and when I pass, the women draw their veils closer. Oh, I hope that someday the women of the world will understand, even as the mother of Jesus understood, that I, wife of Pontius Pilate, tried to save the Christ from the cross. My father was a rich, aristocratic merchant of Greece. I was scarcely 15 years old when a marriage was arranged for me with Pontius Pilate. I had never seen him before the marriage feast because my parents had planned the marriage. Pilate admired my beauty, and he esteemed my wealth, for he was very ambitious. He always said he was a philosopher, seeking the truth. He often said to me, Claudia, love is weakness, fit only for women. So he paid little heed to me. After we were married five years, I became a mother. I seemed to have a new joy in my life. We had a little boy we called Pilo. He was a beautiful child and had a smile so bright that the very slaves looked up when he passed. But Pilo was born with a withered foot. I know that Pilo loved our child, but he always seemed ashamed of a son who could never be a soldier. Then Caesar named Pontius Pilate Council, and we came to Jerusalem to live in a court of dazzling splendor. Pilate was very ambitious in political affairs, so I seldom saw him. I believe I would have died of lonesomeness if it hadn't been for our little boy. One day, a woman came and whispered to me of Jesus, a carpenter of Nazareth who went about healing the sick. She said, he can make the blind to see, the dumb to cry out. He could even make the lame to walk. Oh, if we might only take little Pilo to Jesus so that he might walk straight someday. All Jerusalem began to ring with the power of this Jesus. I went to Pilate and begged him that we might take little Pilo to him to be healed. Pilate said, Yes, I have heard of this man, Jesus. He turned water into wine. He multiplied a few loaves and fish to feed the many. He disappeared out of a crowded room. But Claudia, conjurers of the East have done these things. Hold thyself, Claudia. Remember that you are a Roman's wife, and I command you to stay away from this man. That summer, a strange sickness fell upon us. Little children wasted away like grain, parched by hot winds. And among the sick was our little Pilo. He grew so thin and white. Even Pilate was aroused. He sent runners to Athens, Alexandria, even far off Rome for medicine. But nothing seemed to restore the strength of our little boy. He was slowly dying. One day, a friend brought, brought me a note which read, Jesus is coming this way. Take little Pilate to him. What was there to do? Pilate had commanded I not see this Jesus, and Pilate's breath was almost burned out. Everything we had tried to do to save him had failed. I asked myself if Jesus could save our little boy. Then Mata, our Greek slave, took Pilate gently and glided with him through the dawn. I went along. I wore a heavy veil so I wouldn't be recognized. When we came to the street where Jesus was, there were such crowds we couldn't get through. Then my friend, which had brought me the note, saw us and forced the passage for us through the crowd. Oh, those agonizing moments. My heartbeats were so loud they almost deafened me. As Jesus came, and laid his healing hands on our little boy. Then I heard a cry that will ring forever in my ears. It was, Mother? Mother! And Pilo sprang into my arms, erect and firm, without any sickness in him. Jesus had made him well. Of course, Pilo was glad that Pilo was well, but still he said, Claudia, there's some trickery about this Jesus. He's only a poor carpenter. I must look into this matter closely before either you or Pilate see him again. I knew that in Pilate's doubting, there crept fear, for Herod had said to him, 
Beware of this mad Jesus, who would make himself king here in place of Caesar. <clears throat> One day, Pilate came to speak to me. The fates are against your Jesus of Nazareth. A price has been put on his head, and before even tied, he will be delivered up to the chief priests. Little Pilate, hearing this, said, Father, surely you will save Jesus, for he saved me. Pilate couldn't bear to look into his little son's eyes, so he sent him up to the hills with his teacher, Mata. That night, I had strange dreams of Jesus. I knew that I must go to Pilate at once. It was morning, and the maids told me that Pilate was already in the judgment seat. I could hear the tread of the heavy shoes and the echo of the steps of the iron-shod soldiers on the marble court below the praetorium. I flew at once to Pontius Pilate. I drew aside the purple curtains. And there was Pilate and the tribunal and Jesus standing before them. The hands of Jesus were tied and the cords cut into his flesh. Despite all the agony of his body, which had been badly beaten, his eyes were full of love. He looked gently on Pontius Pilate. Then I heard Pilate say to the crowd, What would you have me do with this just man? Caiaphas, the high priest, spoke. We would ask the death of this man, for he would make himself king here in place of Caesar. Art thou king of the Jews? Jesus spoke. Thou sayest, For this cause came I to the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Now Pilate will deliver Jesus. But the crowd shouted, If you are a friend of this man, Jesus, you are no friend of Caesar's. Pilate turned to the crowd and priests. What is the truth? Pilate was afraid, so he slipped into a corridor away from the crowd. I went to him and fell on my knees and cried, Pilate, this is Jesus who healed our son. Have no part in his death. Oh, Pilate, my husband, I have suffered many things in dreams this night because of him. For your sake and for our child, and for me, your wife, save Jesus. Pilate's face turned gray. If I do not make an example of this man, Herod will speak evil of me to Caesar. If this Jesus be the truth or not, I cannot decide. As he spoke, the guards came forward and took Jesus. Shrieks were heard everywhere. Crucify him! Crucify him! I could hear the beating of clubs upon his body. And when I looked out into the prison yard, Praetorius, and of our bodyguards, his broken hand Jesus had healed, was scourging him the hardest. I saw them press a crown of thorns upon his head until his face was streaming with blood. His eyes full of tears, I looked again and saw a runner enter, bringing a scroll from Herod. It read, Have done quickly with all the prisoners this night, for I would set out early for Rome and would speak well of thee to Caesar. Pontius staggered like a dying man and cried out, I find no fault in him. Dipping his hands into a silver basin, he muttered, I find no fault in him. And Pilate turned Jesus over to the shrieking mob. Now when Christians meet and tell the life of Jesus, they say, He suffered under Pontius Pilate. Those words will live forever. Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate.